up to 50% of all jobs could be automated. That is a pretty stunning statistic. When we think about it, about half of this room's jobs are potentially under threat. If you have been trained in the vocational education and training sector, unfortunately that statistic goes up to about 70%. The question is, why is this happening? We live in an era of artificial intelligence, of blockchains, of robotics, of geopolitical change, globalisation and fake news. We are living through an era of digital disruption. These two things come together through the notion and development of a fourth industrial revolution that is combined along with a change in the way our society works at the geopolitical level that's affecting civics and citizenship and the way we can communicate and interact in our societies. As an educator, I've thought about these things a lot. But in particular, in my last six months at my job, I've been particularly focused around these issues and the issues of the future. So when reflecting on our topic for tonight, I came up with this question. What does the work of the future look like in 2030? And how do we prepare for it? I've been pondering, as I said, this question for quite a while. And I got fixated there for a while on this number, 2030. What does 2030 really mean? And it dawned on me that for those people who are gonna grow up and go into the workforce potentially around 2030 and finish high school, or particularly maybe choose to go to university, they are seven years old at the moment. And I turned around and realised I have a seven-year-old son and his name is Flynn. And I thought, what is it that I can tell Flynn about how to prepare for this future? What is it that I could potentially tell Flynn that would also be relevant to the students that I teach here at the University of Western Australia, to those thinking of coming to university, but also to my family and my friends and my colleagues who face at least another 10 years in the workforce out to 2030. So what I've come up with is my top five tips for Flynn that hopefully will be relevant to the rest of us about how do we prepare for the work of the future in 2030. The first one is to be educated. Education in an era of change and disruption is more important than it's ever been. Education is critical now as well as into the future. It doesn't matter whether it's a degree or a diploma or a PhD. Seek out and take those opportunities for education where you may find them. This is particularly important in an era where we have lots of different types of education and training that we can receive, from massive open online courses through to specific and bespoke training courses. But if I had one bit of advice for Flynn when he turns 17, and trust me, there is no likelihood that he may even listen to what I've got to say, it would be to go to university if he gets the opportunity. Why? Because that same study that tells us 50% of jobs could be automated, that 70% of vocational education and training jobs could be automated, says to us that less than 30% of jobs where you need a university degree are under the same threat. So if you can and you get the opportunity, go to university. In fact, don't go to university once. Consider the fact that you might have to go back again to retrain or to re-educate yourself or to find other qualifications into the future. The second one is breadth is the new black. So my advice would be not to go too narrow too early. Now Flynn came home to me uh, a couple of days ago and announced that for the third time in a row he got 10 out of 10 in his maths test. And he announced that I am quote unquote a maths master. <laughs> and that's great. I'm not much of a mathematician I have to say. He definitely gets that from his grandparents. But if Flynn wants to go to university when he's 17 and study mathematics, I think that would be absolutely great and awesome. But my advice to him wouldn't be to go to university and just study mathematics. He also has a passion and an interest in literature, in arts and in history. And in this modern age of disruption and of change, my advice to him would be to stay broad when he first starts, to engage in his passions in those areas not just to focus on science, technology, engineering and mathematics, the STEM subjects, even though they're critically important, but also to look to the arts and humanities. Because to deal with the fourth industrial revolution, to deal with the geopolitical change we're dealing with today, the focus is on STEAM and not STEM. It is putting on the arts into the science, technology, engineering and mathematics, because that is the totality of who we are as people. My next advice is, one of the benefits of doing those things together, it will help you improve your soft skills. Your ability to communicate, to work in groups and to work in teams, to be entrepreneurial, to be innovative, to be adaptive, to be all those great things. But my other point to Flynn would be, and to everybody else, is education is not the only place that you get that. 
Experiential learning is key to who we are as human beings. And by pursuing the things that we do in our extracurricular activities, our co-curricular activities, the things that we do that are our hobbies and our interests, is how you'll also develop those same skills and hone them so exceptionally well. The key is to remember to think about and to understand how you repackage the skills that you learn in those parts of your life, along with the formal education you receive, and to be able to articulate those to the employers that you're going and sitting in front of. How do I take my formal skills and my informal skills and put them together to explain how I can value add to that workforce of the future? Think careers, not jobs. I have on my wrist a gold watch. My father was given this for doing 36 years of service in exactly the same job. The reason that he stayed in that job for such a long period of time was to provide security to his family. Security that he'd never had when he'd grown up. He was born during the Depression. He grew up during the Second World War in the 1950s and he worked through the boom and bust eras of the 1960s through to 2000. By providing that security of that one job, he allowed his children to go to high school and finish, which he never got to do, and have an opportunity to go to university, which he could never even dream of. Me, as a Generation Xer, I've had a lot of jobs, and I'm actually already on to my third career. <laughs> to reinforce it in my household already, only a month ago, my wife announced that she was going to come to this very university and study at the one that I also teach on, because she was sick of her career and she wanted to do something different. The Australian Productivity Commission will tell us last year that 50% of people who change their job change their industry. 40% of people who change their job change their career. It is estimated that for millennials and for Flynn's generation, he will have up to 10 or perhaps even 12 jobs in his career. So having a breadth of experience and a depth of knowledge and working on his soft skills as well as his disciplinary knowledge is going to be key. The other one is that Credentials and credibility are important. If you're going to take the time to educate yourself or receive training, make sure you get a credential for it. As I mentioned, there is many ways to do this. It can be a diploma, it can be a degree. He may be even be silly enough like me to do a PhD. Who knows? But he has a massive open online courses he can do. He has training courses that come through particular organisations or industry. There is a huge variety of things out there that you can choose from to be educated by but it's important you get the credential that goes along with it that validates what you've done. And it's important that it has a degree of credibility because quality still matters, particularly in an era of information and disinformation of news and of fake news. So if you're gonna get a degree and you're gonna get a diploma or you're gonna get any types of training, look for the best institution that you can that provides the best support it can. Because that quality is gonna be key to how you repair yourself and how you present yourself for the work of the future. Because in the end, there is no value in having a degree from Trump University. <laughs> the future, however, we shouldn't look at in a dystopian type of way. The future does equal opportunity. If we look back in 10 years in the past, as well as 10 years in the future, we can see interesting things. 10 years ago, there was no gig economy and there was no Uber. 10 years ago, there were no app developers and we have a global shortage into the hundreds of thousands of those for today. If you combine all those things and think about the opportunities, it's also not about the jobs of the future, it's the jobs you create for other people into the future and the careers that go along with them. The key and interesting things that happened to me a few weeks ago was a bit of uh, training and development that I got. A young graduate from this university came in to speak to some of our staff and he'd set up his own startup and he was going around to talk to students about how they organise themselves at school and how they think about their interactions and their schooling. What he told us is that young millennials of today don't think about what job they want to do when they grow up. They think about who they want to be when they grow up. So in my broader thinking to Flynn and to others, the key question I think is who is it you want to be? And if you want to prepare yourself for the work of the future, you want to be the person who has a broad based education. You want to be the person who has all those soft skills. You want to be the person who can innovate. You want to be the person who's an entrepreneur. You want to be the person who can mix all these things together to create your future, not just be responding to that future. In the end, those types of skills are what employers I've been talking to over the last six months tell us that are not just for the future, they skills that they want now. In response to what's happening with artificial intelligence, AI and robotics, it's important to repackage those things together because you can't really automate entrepreneurship. 
You can't really get a robot who can do that type of innovative human interaction. So in responding to these things, what I would say to Flynn and to those also in us is that you need to unlock your humanity, you need to pursue your passions, and you need to reveal your multiple careers, and that is how you prepare for the work of the future. Thank you.